For this example, I'm going to go over 1% um, yield question. So I'm going to do number one, and I'm going to do A, which is directly evaluating percent yield. Um, and then I'm going to do D, which is a limiting combined with a percent yield problem. So percent yield, um, I guess like by definition, is basically telling us how much we, it's comparing how much we actually got like in a real lab versus how much we theoretically should have gotten, which we use based off of calculations. So our calculations, when you are given a mass and you're finding a mass of a product, you are assuming 100% um, yield. You're assuming that you're going to get 100% of that product. So for instance, if I had five grams of a reactant and I was supposed to get five grams of the product, that's a 100% yield. I'm assuming I'm going to get five grams. Let's say I get 5.5 grams. Then I have over 100% yield. That means that I had extra that there's some contaminant in there that's like making it heavier than it should have been. Let's say I got like 4.5 instead of 5. So that means my percent yield is lower. I got less than I should have. So at some point I lost product. We're usually not um, like good enough to get 100% yield. So that's why we calculate it um, as part of like an evaluation of our data. So in this first problem in A, uh, when it says 68.3 grams of ethyl acetate should be produced, that's what we are supposed to get. That is our theoretical yield. So I'm just going to put theoretical um, yield on the bottom. And then what we actually got, this is like actual yield in the lab. Um, and then we're going to multiply by 100, and that's going to give us our percent yield. So um, again, it says 68. So this is doing A. It says 68. 0.3 grams is what we like should have produced and then it says but we only produced 43.9 grams so this is what we actually got in real life we got 43.9 grams is recovered so it's asking us to determine the percent yield so we're going to multiply that by 100 and we're just going to put all that into the calculator and when I do that, I get um, 64.2752. And sig fig purposes, I had three sig figs here and three sig figs here, so I should have three in my answer. So that's 64.3% yield. It didn't actually tell us a compound. Oh, it said of eth ethyl acetate. Um, I ran out of room, so I'm just going to write eth acetate. <laughs> Um, the compound and name are both right here. Um, so after your percent yield, you should say what it is of. So that's a, that's a straightforward only percent yield problem. How we usually see percent yield is um, like this, because it's a more real life problem where we have um, a certain amount of both of our reactants. So in this case, it says a mixture of the ethanol. So that's one of our reactants right here, and then it says uh, 8.2 moles of acetic acid, which is our other reactant, and then it says, and we produced uh, 0.46 moles of ethyl acetate. So because I was given three sets of data, that's how I can identify that it was a limiting problem, especially since two of those sets of data were the reactants. So for D, the first thing I need to do is um, figure out who my limiting reactant is. So I'm just going to go ahead and do 0 0.58 um, moles of ethanol. And I'm going to convert that into moles of, oops, I wrote that a little close to the line, moles of ethyl acetate. So moles, and then I'm just going to write eth s because I don't have a lot of room on here. Okay, and then, oh, I'm sorry, I put that in the wrong spot. Um, we're changing it into moles of eth acetate. Okay, and then this is still ethanol on the bottom because we need it to cancel. So I'm going to go and I'm going to look at my equation and I'm going to um, look at the coefficients. I see all the coefficients are one, so I'm just going to real quick double check and make sure that this is um, make sure that this is balanced. So here I have the acetate polyatomic ion, and here I have the acetate polyatomic ion. So since I have one of each, that's balanced. Um, and then here I have one hydrogen, 
uh, plus 3 is 4, 5, 6, 7. And here I have 2, 5, 6, 7. And then for oxygen, I have 1 and 1. And then for carbon, I have 1, 2. And here I have 1, 2. Um, so I am balanced, actually. All of the coefficients are 1. So I'm going to go ahead and put that into my equation, um, which means that um, I'm, that means that I'll get 0 0.58 uh, moles of ethyl acetate. And actually, since it's one to one, I know that that means I'm also going to get um, whatever the other one was, 0 0.82. So this is like given the ethanol, and then this one is given the acetic acid. I'm going to get 0 0.82 because I'll be, again, multiplying by one, dividing by one. So hopefully we've had enough limiting practice to know how to do that. Therefore, we know our, um, our ethanol is our limiting. So that's what we're going to move forward with in our calculation. So 0 0.58 moles of ethyl acetate. And uh, let's see it. We need to evaluate sort of like the wording here. So it says, again, a mixture of 0 0.58 moles of ethanol and 0 0.28 moles of acid, acetic acid is reacted and 0 0.46 moles of acetate is produced. So when you are reading these questions, it's important when you're talking about what's being produced. So again, this last part here, um, is that the theoretical or is it the, the uh, actual, right? Because if you remember, we have two. So is it, was it really like done in the lab for real or are we evaluating, is that a theoretical yield that was evaluated? So most of the time when they give you a value, it is usually the, the actual one because that's the one that you would have to get from a lab. Um, so usually you are looking for the theoretical one um, but when it says like is reacted, that's telling you like present tense, like it's happening in the lab and this is how much we got. So as our like percent yield problem, our 0 0.46 moles is what we were, um, is what we like actually got in the lab. And so we need to, that, to divide that by our theoretical, our calculated value. So we're going to take the limiting, um, the limiting reagent, which was the ethanol, right? We converted that to um, ethyl acetate, and then we need to do a, oh no, it is in moles, sorry, we, we don't need to do a molar mass um, conversion. When you do this, the percent yield, you can do it as grams like we did in the first one, or you can do it as moles. So since our, our, our uh, actual yield was in moles, we can leave our theoretical yield in moles, which is this value here. So the 0 0.58, uh, moles and then times a hundred percent or times a hundred to get our percent is 79. I need two sig figs. So 79.3. So that's 79% uh, yield of ethyl acetate. Um, all right, so there's our final answer. So it was just doing a limiting problem, which is what we saw here, this first step. Again, when you're calculating um, the uh, either the mass or the moles, depending on what your other one was given in, that is the theoretical. So that's, again, why we put it on the bottom. And then one more time, what we had in the problem, this 0 0.46 was our actual, so that's what went on top. Um, so the rest of this worksheet, I think the next problem, like number two, is about is using moles, but the rest of it uses grams. So if I had to convert this moles to grams, I would just use molar mass, right? I would put the moles of ethyl acetate on the bottom, the grams of ethyl acetate on the top, and then I would use molar mass to finish that conversion, and then the grams is what would go here. Again, I was only able to stop at moles because my actual yield was given in moles as well. So the units just have to match. Um, so if you're giving grams, you need to calculate to grams, but if you're given moles, you can calculate to moles. Um, okay, so that's it. There's your example. Please let me know if you have questions, and don't forget to check your answers when you're done.